Hello and welcome to my Styrian Grand Prix driver rankings video. The video in which you guys, the audience, can get involved. Following the link in the top line of the description, you can rank each of the 20 drivers based on their performance in qualifying and also the race. With 20 out of 20 being the best score that they could possibly achieve, and 1 out of 20 being the worst score that they could possibly achieve. Then I will average out all of those audience ranks and compare them to my ranks in today's video, and also my big data algorithm, and compare those in a video released on Monday or Tuesday, depending on what time I have. We will also quickly go over the audience prediction championships for the Styrian Grand Prix. So without further ado, let us jump on in to the Styrian Grand Prix driver rankings video. But we'll quickly just take a look at the drivers' championships. It is Max Verstappen who now leads by 18 points, the largest championship gap so far this season. Perez almost at 100 points and Norris is still P4, 12 points ahead of Valtteri Bottas. And then we take a look at the constructors. Again, Red Bull only just by three points, but just is just enough. They have extended their lead over Mercedes to 40 points. McLaren is still third, 12 points ahead of Ferrari. And Alfa Tori and Aston Martin are so uber close. But from the World Championships, we will now take a look at the Audience Prediction Championships. And the results for the Styrian Grand Prix look a bit like this. I actually won a thing! Again, I think this is like the second time that I have topped the leaderboards. Me and Min Verstappen are joint on 18, both getting our bold statements. My bold statement of both Ferrari scoring points actually came true. Then Pablo is in third on 17 points. Arturo Salazar, current championship leader, Evan Darcy is still always up there. They must have a crystal ball. They really need to take the lottery at this rate. We've then got Aaron from the Five Red Lights channel scoring 13. We then also have people like Hal in my close contest with them. There's five points between us this round. Then taking a look at the second table, we have people like White River, a new entry. Juan Pablo Arcos, another new entry. Leroy as well. Andrew, Carrie Slaughter, and then Alexa also. But now adding all of these scores together for the races that have happened this season, we end up with a leaderboard that looks a bit like this. There are 111 different independent entries across this whole season. That is absolutely mega. But like I said, it is Evan Darcy that is just storming away at the top. But we now have four people in the 100 point mark. That is Joe Bisho in second, and then myself and a Doctor Who channel joint on 102. Then we take a look at the second leaderboard for the total points scored across this season. Then from here, we'll take a look at leaderboard number three. Then there is just one more to look at in terms of the overall points scored for this season. And then finally, we have the last runners now, not to worry if you see yourself very low down on this leaderboard in case you have only entered one or two rounds, unlike myself and a couple other people who have entered into every single one. There is a brand new table that I have done which averages out your points for the entries that you have made. And that leaderboard looks a little bit like this. So the current championship leader, Evan Darcy, is only P3 in the average points scored for the entries that they have made. We then have people like Alex Santiago, Brock from the Forum of Racing. Then we've also got people like Joe Bisho, Danielle B are up there. All above myself, I'm slipping down the average leaderboard overall. I'm now in the second half of this first table. I have an average of 12.8 out of 25 in every single one of these rounds. So it is this table that you would really like to see yourself boosted up and high up in this leaderboard. Then taking a look at leaderboard number two for the average points scored for the entries that you have made. There are lots of people who average at exactly 10. We've got people like Amelia Swan, Aswin, Channel Infinity, Elson as well, Josh H, Junior Garcia. And then we'll take a look at leaderboard number three. And then finally, leaderboard number four. And then, like I said, there are 111 independent entries into this overall contest, and that is just absolutely insane. I love all of the support that people have and people leave for the Audience Prediction Championships. Now, if you guys are interested and want to get involved in the Audience Prediction Championships, then check out the video that I release on Thursday of the Grand Prix weekend, in which you can get involved then. But now what we're going to do is we're going to be ranking each of the drivers for the Styrian Grand Prix. 
Now, like I said at the start, 20 is the best score that they could possibly achieve, and 1 is the lowest score that they could possibly achieve. I myself, I'm taking into account qualifying and also the race overall. Obviously, considering the race having more weighting overall and then qualifying having some sort of impact, but not a massive weighting. Now we are going in the 2020 championship order, so we start with the two Mercedes and then we will end with the two Williams. So without further ado, we will jump on into it and we start with Lewis Hamilton scoring 16 out of 20. I wanted to put this at 15 personally because his qualifying was eh. He was consistently behind Valtteri Bottas. He closed the gap progressively, but it wasn't too bad. Then obviously Bottas had his uh, five or three place uh, grid drop due to his spin in practice, which promoted Hamilton up to the front row. And then the race was just eh. He didn't have the pace for Max Verstappen. He was always five or six seconds back until the last couple of laps. But he was always very quick versus Perez and Bottas. So yeah, I think 16 out of 20 is fair for Lewis Hamilton. However, his teammate Valtteri Bottas, I've also given a 16. Now, this is again a sort of interesting rank. I've mainly given him a 16 out of 20 because I kind of wanted to give him a 17 really because he did consistently outperform Hamilton in qualifying in all three sessions. And then in the Grand Prix, if it wasn't for his uh, three place grid drop, he would have beaten Hamilton, I reckon. He had the pace to beat Lewis Hamilton, I believe, personally, off the top of my brain. But strategy played into his part in getting that podium over Sergio Perez due to Perez's slightly slow pit stop around 4.4 seconds, allowing Bottas to overtake him in that pit stop phase. And then he managed to hold on to that P3 in the dying, dying laps of the Grand Prix from a charging Sergio Perez. So I kind of want to give him a 17, but I think 16 is fair. Then from Bottas, we take a look at Max Verstappen. 20 out of 20. This is the first ever time that I've given 20 out of 20. It was just a flawless, flawless performance. Pole position by over, what was it, two tenths or something like that, which I know isn't a significant gap, but considering the dominance of Mercedes over the past seven years, and in particular qualifying, to be just that quick overall, that's pretty special. And then, like I said in the Lewis Hamilton piece, to just dominate the Grand Prix and just drive off into the distance and just waltz away. The only thing he didn't do was get fastest lap of the Grand Prix, but he easily had the pace for the fastest lap. If he did choose to go for the fastest lap, he could have easily gotten it. He just didn't take that extra pit stop at the very end like Lewis Hamilton did. So overall, just an absolutely flawless, flawless weekend. Nothing to fault for Max Verstappen. Then Sergio Perez, he also scores 16 out of 20. Now, this one I did kind of want to actually... Mm, I might put this at 15, actually, because his qualifying wasn't anything to shout about. He was slower than a McLaren. And then in the Grand Prix... See, no, 16 I think is actually sensible, because in the Grand Prix he did well. He just lost out due to a slow pit stop that was 4.4 seconds, which made him lose the position to Valtteri Bottas. Whereas if he'd have come out in front of Bottas, he'd have stayed in front of Bottas. So no, I think 16 out of 20 is fair for both Lewis Hamilton, Valtteri Bottas and also Sergio Perez. Then we take a look at the McLaren pair and we start with Daniel Ricciardo. 12 out of 20. The main reason why I've brought this down is because of qualifying, mainly. Uh, just out in Q2 when your teammate's up in P4 uh, officially and then starting in P3 after the penalty. It just... Uh. Now, I know he did have a little bit of an engine issue for a couple of laps, which lost a lot of places during the race, and he did actually gain a couple during the race, hence why it's not super low. But, yeah, maybe it could be a 13, but I think anything more than that is just a little bit of a stretch for Daniel Ricciardo. However, his teammate Lando Norris scores an 18, an exceptional qualifying and to be best of the rest of the Grand Prix in a race where every driver apart from the two Mercedes and the two Red Bulls were lapped, 
I think that is an exceptional performance. So 18 out of 20 is his score. He did hold off uh, Sergio Perez for just a couple of laps until he sort of led him by, almost it looked like. And then he again did a very similar thing to Valtteri Bottas. But then from the McLarens, we'll take a look at the Aston Martins. Sebastian Vettel, 9 out of 20. Now, much the same as Daniel Ricciardo, this was a little bit of a disappointing qualifying for Sebastian Vettel, especially in relation to his teammate. And then the race, again, just a little bit disappointing in relation to his teammates. There were no real issues. He just didn't have the pace. There, there was just no pace to show, unlike his teammate who managed to finish in P8? P9? P8 overall. So yeah, just a sort of uneventful race for Sebastian Vettel. And then speaking of Lance Stroll, he himself scores 13. A very good qualifying and a decent race, holding off the likes of Fernando Alonso, etc. Not quite doing enough to hold off the charging Charles Leclerc, but a very, very good race for Lance Stroll. Then from Aston Martin, we will take a look at Alpine. Fernando Alonso, 12 out of 20. Now, this was very difficult to score Lance Stroll and then Fernando Alonso because they basically both did the same thing. They, they, they qualified well, and then in the race, they stayed well. However, I've given Alonso a little bit of a less score because he was a little bit behind. That's, that's basically my reasoning. That, that There's no other reasoning, it, reasoning to it than that. That is simply it. And then from Fernando Alonso, we take a look at Esteban Ocon. Six. Now, I honestly think this is being generous. I have no idea, none whatsoever, uh, yeah, no idea what happened with Esteban Ocon. It was a shit qualifying out in Q1, and then it was just a shit race. It just, he went nowhere, nowhere whatsoever. So perhaps we could lower this to a four, maybe even a three. I think I'm going to lower it to a four. So unless any reports of an engine issue or just genuine faulty mechanical doodars with the car, I can't see this score rising above a four for Esteban Ocon. But then we'll take a look at the Ferraris and we start with Charles Leclerc, 14 out of 20. Now it was a very good qualifying, a very, very good qualifying. And then the race, if we were to exclude lap one, if we were to exclude lap one, this would have been a 16 or a 17 race. However, lap one isn't excluded. Lap one did happen, hence why he scores 14 out of 20. It was a fairly racing incident sort of incident with Pierre Gasly. Pushed wide, came back onto the track, both following a wiggly wiggly bit of the circuit and they just boop, touched. And it was as simple as that. Yeah, a little bit clumsy. Clumsy. Clumsy is what it was. That's exactly what it was. But the drive after that he put in was just absolutely spectacular. I just don't really want to give him too much more than a 14, maybe a 15 tops because he put himself in that position. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been like that. He'd have been fighting with Lando Norris and then he'd have earned a 15 or a 16 on merit rather than forcing himself in that position, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Then from Charles Leclerc, we'll take a look at Carlos Sainz. 15 out of 20. Best of the rest apart from Lando Norris. A very good qualifying and just a very, very good race. I'm not 100% sure. I can't quite remember the gaps between Sainz and Norris during the race, but I think they were fairly sort of nip and tuck, sort of even. Not like racing super hard, but just sort of there and thereabouts. So yeah, 15 out of 20 for Carlos Sainz. Then from Ferrari, we'll take a look at Alfa Tori and Pierre Gasly. I've just slapped him in the middle. 10. Because we have no idea what would have happened to him during the race. And it was a very good qualifying. So I don't want to give him anything less because that's harsh. And I don't want to give him anything more because I think that's far too generous. So then we take a look at Yuki Tsunoda. 13 out of 20. A much better score for Yuki Tsunoda. A very good qualifying and a very, very good race scoring some points. Now, he was involved in the kerfuffle waffle at the start of the Grand Prix, but sort of just had to slow down a little bit, maybe lost a couple of positions uh, in the slowing down. But yeah, 13 out of 20, a very, very decent race for Yuki Tsunoda. Then we'll take a look at the Alfa Romeos, and Kimi Raikkonen scores 12. I 
actually, thinking about it now, I'm tempted to raise this to perhaps 13 slash 14. But his qualifying was really disappointing. His qualifying was actually rather disappointing to be so far off of Giovinazzi, but then in the race to just woof, flip it completely and challenge for points against the Aston Martins of Sebastian Vettel and stuff. That was a drive not worthy of the Alfa... I was about to say Aston Martin car. Not worthy of the Alfa Romeo car. And yet he put it there. That is the experience of Kimi Raikkonen. And I was saying in, in the previous video, in the qualifying video I did yesterday, that he's done. And he's clearly not done. He's clearly not done. So perhaps I might just raise this to 13, maybe 14. I'll consider it and I'll look at it over the video that gets released on Tuesday slash Wednesday. Then we'll take a look at Antonio Giovinazzi. 11 out of 20. Qualifying was very, very good. The race, not so very good. And again, because I didn't want to give him the same slash better score than Kimi Raikkonen, he gets an 11. Whereas Mick Schumacher in the Haas, he gets 12 out of 20. In a car that was 6 tenths slower than the next non-Haas car, and both locking out the rear end of the grid overall, there was a one and a half tenth gap between him and Mazepin, which isn't super impressive, considering the average gap so far between them has been half a second. Whereas the Grand Prix, he had the pace to beat Latifi, he had the pace to easily beat Mazepin overall. So yeah, 12 out of 20 for Mick Schumacher. Whereas his teammate Nikita Mazepin, 6. It's just, he did nothing. He did absolutely nothing this whole Grand Prix. Yes, in qualifying, he was one and a half tenths off of Mick Schumacher, which isn't too bad, like I said. The race was bad. It's as simple as that. The race was bad. Then penultimately, we will take a look at Mr. George Russell. 15 out of 20. A beautiful qualifying and just eight thousandths of a second off of getting into Q3. And then in the race, he was doing so well. He was in the points. And then heartbreak as mechanical issues end his run. We'll never know if he would have been able to continue that pace all the way to the end of the Grand Prix, but it was looking so bloody good, and it just came to an end, which is why he scores 15 out of 20. If he'd have scored points, it would have been 18, 19 out of 20. But the whole, just the hopes was there, the, the, the feeling was there, just didn't quite work out. And then finally, we will take a look at Nicholas Latifi. Nine out of 20. Qualifying, he was so close to getting into Q2, just didn't quite work out. And then in the race, ah, just didn't have anywhere near the pace as George Russell and was battling with Mazepin. He wasn't even as quick as Mick Schumacher. Ah, really, really difficult for Nicholas Latifi. 9 out of 20. And there we go, there are my driver rankings for the Styrian Grand Prix all done and dusted. Make sure to follow the link in the top line of the description to submit your driver rankings for each of the 20 drivers. But that is all I've got for you today guys, please let me know of anything that you found interesting in today's video in the comments down below, and I'll catch you in the next video with whatever and whenever I decide to make it. I'll see you guys then.